And what's been new with you? A lot. I mean, where do you want to begin, Michelle? Uh, I think you have a lot of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I have a new series yeah, coming out on Wednesday. It seems pretty exciting. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's been a really great year. Thank goodness. A new series coming out on Wednesday on Bravo called Best Room Wins. Um, a lot of new products coming out this fall. And, of course, a new partnership with Terminex during Lyme Dis Disease Awareness Month, um, which is super important to me, very relevant to my own life, um, that we'll be talking about today. Oh, good. Well, let's start with talking about your new show. It's on Bravo? Yes, I have a new show on Bravo called Best Room Wins. Um, it's a collaboration with El Decor, which is super sexy, as well as Bravo being super sexy. And we're going into very luxurious homes across Los Angeles and doing a big design competition. Um, it's fun and it's funny. That sounds good. Now tell me about your show on Netflix. Netflix is a show called Stay Here, in which I went around the country um, redesigning Airbnbs. How we travel and how we want to live as we travel is a new category of design television that I wanted to really explore, what design is worth um, and how it hosts a person even when you're not there. All very incredibly powerful things about what I do but isn't always talked about or seen on television. It's just really fun. Now you're originally from Minnesota, but where do you live now? I'm originally from Minneapolis. I moved to Manhattan when I was 17 and here I am, still, two years later. Ah, that's great. <laughs> now, were you always interested in do-it-yourself stuff? I grew up in a do-it-yourself family. So um, we would buy old Victorians that cost nothing in the 80s and renovate them ourselves, preserve them, strip the 60s and 70s off of them, um, live in them, and then sell them. So I kind of learned by accident. Um, but then, of course, went to design school later um, in Manhattan, got my degree, uh, went into professional design at 17, 18, um, while I was actually studying, and um, got picked up to do television maybe eight years later. Um, and here we are. <laughs> now, what are, some, what are some current trends in design we should know about? Trends in design, uh, well, there's a lot of nature nurture. So with our obsession with tech and having this poreless, colorless, sterile piece of tech in our hands eight hours plus a day, there's been a global trend of really needing the connection to nature in a bigger way. So you've probably seen everything about plants in your house, like almost a jungle. It's the new accessory of home, plants on plants on plants. And there's every kind of ceramic potter, pot, piece of pot that you can find. I'm sorry, there's any kind of ceramic pot planter everywhere from urban outfitters to anthropology to Neiman Marcus to Home Depot. Plants are a big deal because we're missing our relationship with the mama. Um, you're also seeing a lot of moss greens and deep olives because of this. And in balance to that, you're seeing the clays, the blushes, and the pinks making a big uh, complement to those mossy greens. We're calling it terracotta or clay. It's basically pink and green like it was in the 80s, like it was in the 30s, and like it will be 30 years from now. Um, but it is about that nature void um, and our connection to that. And so the textures are also symbiotic to that need. Um, so very tactile, very uh, tassely and rough um, grit. We want to see texture. We don't want smooth anything anymore because we're sick of it. That's some big trends. I can keep going, but we need about an hour to talk about that. So uh, those are very helpful. They're great yeah, ideas. good. Well, I, I mean, think there could be, be a little bit of a problem with us sometimes too. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Lyme Awareness, a uh, Lyme Disease Awareness Month, please? I can. Lyme Disease Awareness Month is a big deal for everybody in this country because over 300,000 of us contract Lyme disease every single year. That is a huge number. That's bigger than I even knew. It's basically like a whole city going down with Lyme disease every single year in America. Um, and now there's a lot of different preventative tactics to battle um, contracting Lyme disease first and foremost. And that's why I'm here today. I have Lyme disease. I contracted it about 10 years ago. Um, I live in Manhattan. And you think only people who live in the woods can get Lyme disease. Not true. Ticks can live on every blade of grass, any leaf on any tree, any bush, anywhere in the world. Um, so I have partnered with Terminex because they've developed a system called the Tick Defend System in which it creates 
a barrier around your home. And over 75% of all Lyme disease cases have been contracted around or nearby their own house. So that means most likely in your back or front yard is where you're gonna get Lyme disease. So Terminix has created a system much like we've created for mosquitoes for the last many decades. We now have again seven different species of ticks, which is huge. Had that existed 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today talking about Lyme disease because I wouldn't have gotten it. Um, beyond that, 10% of all proceeds from the Terminex defend, tick defense system is going to the Global Lyme Alliance, which is a huge and very important nonprofit group that does education, research, and gives a lot of information and awareness about Lyme disease itself, which is necessary because there is no cure. It's a bad autoimmune disease that anyone can get, your pet, your kid, or yourself. How did you learn that you had it? <clears throat> oh, I knew something was wrong. Um, I had been tested for everything. Lyme disease, of course, first. I live in the East Coast where Lyme disease is very common. I didn't test positive for Lyme disease. It went into the eight or nine months of slowly unraveling with a, a myriad of symptoms because Lyme presents itself as this great masquerader. It pretends it's a lot of different kinds of diseases from Bell's palsy to MS. And you test negative for all of them. And then finally, finally in my eighth month, I, I, was, I did test positive. And that is because Lyme disease is like a tiny little flower, a terrible flower that lives inside your body and floats around and hides out in different organs. It only blooms once every four to six weeks. Boop. And that's the only time you can test positive. And then it closes back up and you test negative. So if you think you have it, if you have brain fog, incredible fatigue for no reason, joints are stiff, you're getting nerve little pins and needles all over your body, facial paralyzation, super common symptoms. If you're getting any of those, be vigilant about testing for Lyme. Don't test once, test 10 times, test 12 times in a month. That's a very good tip. Where can we go to get more information on this? For more information, you go to Terminex.com to figure out how to first protect yourself. Just don't get it, how about that? Then second, go to the Global Lyme Alliance website where you can find out all the information, education and research that's being done with Lyme today. Is there anything you want to add about your personal life? Um, sure. I, if you're available Wednesday night, I have a brand new series coming out on Bravo called Best Room Wins. You can all tune in at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I hope all of you are watching. Of course, we talked about Stay Here as well. That's on Netflix in perpetuity. Um, and you can go to my Instagram to find out everything that is going on with my life and what we're doing next. If you want to keep what is your What is your Instagram? Genevieve handle? Border. Not hard, but my name is hard to spell. So <laughs> put a Chiron up. <laughs> well, thank you very much and good luck to you on everything. Thank you, my dear. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.